as long as you're yeah. as long as you're in it for love of performing and the music and everything and you're not just trying to turn it into a, like a financial stability situation don't don't get into God. music for that don't get, <laughs> get into other things This video is brought to you by HostGator. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music, wherever it may be, and the people that make it, including my guest. And my guest is actually based out of Nashville, Tennessee, and she is a multi-instrumentalist playing guitar, piano, uh, violin, I think, uh, there's, I think there's something else in there. Uh, she's a recent crop of songwriters that are popping up on TikTok, and that's where I found her, actually. This is my second ever uh, interview I got off of TikTok. First one was Bright Kelly. And uh, so I'm excited to have that. She hopes her music can create a safe space for everyone to process whatever is on their hearts and minds. Her new single, Jesus Tis So Sweet, is out now. Please welcome to the channel, Lydia Tabor. Hi, Lydia. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the party. Thank you. So, it's a good party. <laughs> yeah. uh, you don't know yet. No, I'm just kidding. And if, if you want to be like Lydia and hopefully get featured on Room 6, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address or by clicking the Room 6 social media link down below. That's where you'll find all the things that I'm up to online and also ways you can support the channel should you so desire, including buying some merch at room6.shop. And what the heck, while you're down there, go ahead and click the like, share, and subscribe button. It all helps, and I thank you. Now then, back to the interview. Uh, first off, we are going to see kind of like a, a slideshow after this interview, right? With uh, the song Jesus Tis So Sweet that's out now. Right? Yes. Cool. Make sure I'm on the same page. Um, and Lydia, if you don't mind me asking, if, and feel free to tell me to, you know, shut up. Uh, how old are you? 26. 26. Okay. Because I'll, be I'll be honest, you look younger. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, right. Nobody's ever going to complain about that. Um, but uh, it's a there is a, a whole crop of like from 15 years old on up that is really popping up on, on local music everywhere, um, including this channel. That is just like, where was I at this age? What have I what was I doing? And the same with 26 years old. I, I was just learning how to play a guitar and I was just I think maybe I wrote a song called Lonely. <laughs> You know we've all got them yeah as you do so uh i want to talk about your earliest musical influence which is not like when you were growing up but what do you remember a moment where you said i want to do that Ooh. uh the first moment was probably actually mozart when i was eight wow <laughs> i remember um like learning about the classical composers and just in my mind something locked in that was like i I'm a composer. <laughs> and I remember like being bummed that my last name was Tabor, which like felt more lame than like Mozart or Beethoven. Cause I'd like, you know, picked up that they all went by their last names. Um, and now I like my last name a lot, but, uh, I, that was one. And then, um, and then I really loved Miley Cyrus when I was nine and had a little songwriting phase where I started putting lyrics to my songs, but then I never showed anybody. Um, and then in like middle school, I really, I started listening to Rich Mullins, who is like a Christian artist from the nineties who like his, his lyricism, but really his, like his music really kind of just captured me. Um, and then later in high school, I started listening to a lot of like indie musicians and that's kind of, that's really solidified, like again like okay like i've got to do this like anyway i don't know if that's enough of an answer for you but more than enough that was great and that's in from mozart to miley that's that's a swing <laughs> it is yeah i've never heard that and i like that um and, and having heard some of your music i can i can hear that actually which is you wouldn't think like it, it's weird but it, it I, I totally get that um and i'm i always like to say you know i like everything from mozart to metallica and then mm -hmm after 40 years old, things changed. <laughs> but no, I'm really, um, I'm enjoying, like I said, the the, the younger crop of, of singer songwriters. It's almost like kind of a, 
like a almost a folk song kind of revolution where people are like hey wait a minute we can write music that's you know meaningful and and means something to people and and including us and isn't just noise necessarily yeah i mean noise for the sake of noise is fun too but yeah so really uh Mozart got you on the composer thing side of things and the classical music side of things, but it was later when the songwriter, like, I, I want to actually perform stuff. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, that actually didn't. I mean, so I really liked songwriting. Like, it was always in my bones a little bit, like, in when I was nine, and then kind of passed, and I did more classical stuff and whatever. And then it wasn't till, but I always, it wasn't till after college, actually. Um, I finished my first song and that was really because I had nothing else to do. Like <laughs> um, I'd been writing parts of songs kind of in the back of my mind, but um, I, I didn't really think, I always considered myself, I probably would do be like be in a band or write music for other people or whatever. Um, and then some of my friends encouraged me. They were like, you're, you could actually do like kind of what's, why wouldn't you want to do it for yourself? And that got me thinking. And then I kind of kept writing and haven't really stopped. So. Right on. And you shouldn't like, you know, I'm still batting around songs in my head and I haven't recorded in a long time <laughs> or performed in live in front of people in a long time because room six is now my new mistress. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you and I share something in common. We are both if 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 we're on the astrology side of things, we're both cancers. Oh, actually, I'm a Leo. July sixteenth. Uh, twenty sixth. Oh, I somebody must have wished you a happy birthday early because that's what I went off of. Yep. Never mind then. Mm -hmm. Never mind, Leo. Forget it. No, never mind. I'm okay. I'm July twelfth. So, uh, do you know anybody famous that was born uh, on your uh, birthday? I think from a Google search I did a long time ago. Because uh, we all do that. Sandra Bullock. Ooh, okay. And Mick Jagger. <laughs> wow, again, bit of a swing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, try this. Julius Caesar. Nice. I, I don't know. Amazing. Well, I mean, like, I don't know. He didn't, you know, <laughs> things didn't end so well for him. But yeah. Uh, and also, no, that's true. a lot of um, performing entertainer type people uh, are born in July for some reason. So. All right, getting back to music. You're a serial band starter. What's that about? <laughs> uh, I like to start bands, and I wish I had more to start. Um, I think it's a blast. Um, I have two bands that I'm in right now. One is called Criminal Pony, um, Great which name. started because. Great name. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm excited about it. We're having a lot of fun. Um, it's me, my sister Meg, and my friend Ella. Right on. And we started because uh, somebody called my friend Ella and they were like, hey, we're doing this charity event. Can you come like, or, or do you know any bluegrass bands in Nashville that would pity enough, us enough to come? And she was like, no, I don't. And then they like asked her again and she was like, well, yeah, sure. So she turned to me and Meg and we're like, you wanna make a bluegrass band? And we're like, sure. We can so my sister learned the banjo. <laughs> I like started playing more fiddle things. Anyway, we ended up rewrote like four songs for this random gig in like nowhere, Pennsylvania. How long did you have? Like, we to just went, do this. We had we had a couple months. Okay, we had a good heads We're up. Still learning so, the banjo in a couple months. Oh, she's amazing, and she wrote like one of my favorite songs ever. Um, but so we did this, and we were like, well, we should like give ourselves a name, and haha, we should start an Instagram for our like friends because it was kind of a joke with our friends. And then, um, and then we were having a lot of fun, and so we've kind of kept going. And then, in like August, somebody reached out to us. It was a friend of a friend, and they were having a little like music festival thing that they were hosting with a whole bunch of like actual legit musicians. Um, and they invited us to play. And so we just did that like a week ago 
and wrote a couple new originals for that. And that was like really fun. So there's Criminal Pony, that's Bluegrass. Bluegrass slash old country slash like millennial. <laughs> I don't know. Um, sure, why not? And then Leg the Band, uh, it's my sister and I, uh, again, kind of just happened because a couple of years ago we were both like, super bored and like borderline depressed, maybe not even borderline, probably just depressed. Um, and we were like, no, we should do, we should start a band. And uh, I just, I have a lot of songs and they're all different. It is kind of the range of like Mozart to Miley. And I even kind of need to update some of my bio stuff because the music that I wrote three years ago is so different than the music that I'm writing now. And not even in a like I'm a different person kind of way, but kind of in like, I write a lot of songs in one genre and then I like get interested in something else. So then sometimes I cycle back to old ones and, you know, so, you know, I go through a lot of different things, but I just have this like, this purse bag tote garbage bag full of <laughs> random songs that just have no place like, and so the best place to put them would be a band called Leg. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, it'd be a funny album name, cheap cuts. Oh, that's good. We have a whole list of puns. You, so you, you can use that. <laughs> yeah. We've got, uh, the deviled legs. Um, <laughs> anyway, and it's fun too, cause her name's Meg and my name's Lydia. So it's actually our names combined. Ah, um, there, the, the, there are the penny drops. I was wondering why just leg, you just picked a random body part. Well, we did actually. <laughs> Um, that's where it started. Evan, we're like, and also, um, so yeah, um, leg does all the songs that we have that are just like, where are you going to put a song about being a third wheel or where are you going to put a song about like, that's Elizabethan pop. Like, you know, it's like, Oh, that goes to like, um, well, if, and... e if either of those bands wants to come on the channel, let me know. Okay. I'll let you know. It, Criminal Pony might um might take you up on that. Right on, because I, I I would love to hear this. <laughs> yeah. Right on. So um so that's yeah you're definitely a serial band starter. Get, yeah. Get, get help. <laughs> you're like I have help. It's my sister. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, she needs help too. Yeah. I I wanted to ask you um that you've how long have you been performing like you know in front of people? But how long have you been performing as Lydia Tabor? I guess maybe three years now. Okay, so you've you've done a fair bit of shows then in that time. Yeah, a couple here and there, but a lot of it like started around COVID. And well, then, yeah, like a lot of people, yeah. Yeah, and um, a lot of them have been. I guess yeah, I've done a fair amount of performing. I haven't done as much as I'd like to, um, just because it takes a lot of work. Right on. To which find gig. But yeah, well, which leads me to my next question: What is your most memorable gig moment of performing and it could be something where you checked off some rock star wish list or you know thing or or things went way off the rails or just you know some bass player went to jail whatever but uh do you have a, a like a, a a line to pull out at a party like this one time i don't know if this would be the moment but it's the first one that comes to mind um is i with criminal pony we uh did some new songs and one I had recently written was called Blame the Divorce. Um, and I hadn't really sung it in front. That was the first time it was performed. Mm -hmm. And I was playing it and I was hearing the audience's reaction and I saw that the audience got it. And that felt really good. Like to be like, okay, I've communicated something. <laughs> um, Cause sometimes it's, it's a little, you can't really gauge what's going on in people's minds when you're performing, like people are all over the place. But I think that was a moment like where I was like, oh, like this, like this is communicating well with people. And that was fun. That's actually a pivotal moment for a, a performer and a songwriter when it, it, there's people like you you know, they could like your music, but they, if they're actually like connecting with it, next thing you know, they're singing it with you. And that's, yeah, that's huge. And I, I never got that, unfortunately. Um, so maybe ha I'll have words has like tons of room for lyrics to breathe mm -hmm. while songs like Lancelot have rapid fire vocals. And I was wondering which do you prefer performing? Oh, I don't know because 
Lancelot with the rapid fire words is like fun and you're telling a story and people are like, you're kind of bringing a little bit of joy and people are laughing and that like, that's its own thing. But then like when I sing, like maybe I'll have words. Like I am reminded kind of that song to me is so personal. Like I'm reminded kind of who I am. And there have been moments when I've looked out while playing that song or or some of my other more, my other songs that are more along those lines. Um, I'll look out and I'll s like see it in people's eyes that they, they're locked in. And, and that mean that like, that means something too. So I don't know. It's kind of like, do you like to like, it's kind of almost like the difference of like, well, do you like to laugh? with your friends or do you like to have deep conversations with your friends? You know, and it's like, Oh no, like I love them both. Why not you know? both? Like, yeah. I, yeah. Like it's, they're both important to me. So I wish I could answer that. I, I can't throw out either one of them. Totally understand. Um, there's both have their place in like, you know, it depends on the mood you're in to listen to as well. So, mm -hmm. all right. So from there, I actually want to take a quick moment here to say uh, thank you for watching. And if you don't know who Lydia is, definitely hit those social media uh, links that I put down in the description. And then right now, we're going to take a quick moment to hear a message from future Josh. So see you in a minute. And now a word from our sponsors. Thanks, past Josh. Nowadays, without a website or online presence, you'll have a hard time getting your music out there. The internet is still a powerful tool for the act, trying to grow its name recognition and... That's where having a powerful hosting and website partner like HostGator comes in. Handy. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7 via phone, email, and live chat. I've got over 9 million websites that trust them, and uh, yeah, they're pretty awesome. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get up to 65% off hosting and 55% off their website builder plus free domains just enter the promo code gator model at checkout and you'll be helping out the channel thanks to host gator for being a sponsor and let's get back to the show we're back and if that sponsor spot interested you at all please consider clicking the link down below you'll save some money i'll make some money it's a win-win now then getting back to the interview with lydia uh and stick around by the way we're going to be seeing that slideshow um music video after the interview for Jesus Tis So Sweet, which is, um, it is sweet. <laughs> so back to you. I wanted to ask, do you still have the Thoreau pillow? The, oh my gosh. Deep cut. Long time ago. I hope I, I think I do in a box somewhere. Let, for, um, for the people that don't know, let's let's tell the story. Someone made this for you, and it's a picture yeah. of David of uh, not David Thoreau. Henry David Thoreau. Uh, Henry yep. David Thoreau. I was um, like, I'm missing a my name. sister for one of my sisters for Christmas years ago got me a pillow, and they drew Henry David Thoreau's face on it because it's a Thoreau pillow. And I I had a little transcendentalist phase. I don't really know if it's over really, <laughs> but I haven't like read a book in a long time. Um, but uh and i love puns so it was a really good gift that is a really good but gift and i, I saw that and i was like i'll bet it's hiding somewhere in a closet or something yeah but i don't think i could have thrown it away but thrown it away yes. god help me <laughs> so uh what is uh, now i know that we're focusing on jesus tis so sweet but you also have uh something kind of like something kind of cool coming out soon right yeah mm -hmm. i haven't like officially officially announced it yet Ooh, room six um, exclusive Exactly. Um, but an author, um, Melissa Collings, she wrote and released a book called The False Flat. Um, actually, I think it was like number one in Australia on Amazon. Wow. Um, but it's a romance book. And um, it's she basically she reached out to me and she was like, hey, there's a scene in this book. And this was before she had published it. This was back in January. She's like, there's a scene in this book where they're at a concert and uh like there are these words, like there are words to the song that's happening on stage. And like in between the lines of the songs, like 
the characters are thinking their own thoughts. So it's like one line of a song and the characters thinking about this, and then a totally different line of a song that doesn't even like rhyme with the first one necessarily. It's kind of like a broken up song in different lines. Sounds like so musical theater. What'd you say? Sounds like musical theater. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. And so she asked if I would take the song parts of the book and then fill in with additional lyrics and then like write also write a melody with it and record it. And I um, honestly, I was like, I can do this, but like her, she didn't have a like ginormous budget for it because she's an independent author, you know? And I, and I was like, I can't, I don't have a ton of skills, whatever. So we, uh, but we decided that we were gonna do it anyway. And it was so fun. So anyway, that's coming out. It's called All I Wanna. It's a rock song. <laughs> um, and uh, cause they're at Bonnaroo and it had to be a rock song. Um, and we were just gonna do a little acoustic recording. And then um, I was recording it with Ella. She and I, we call ourselves business and crime. Um, cause we do, uh, we decided we were gonna commit to the bit um, and be musicians, um, or at least say that we are and look like we are. Um, and so we got a little carried away and ended up adding a lot of stuff. And anyway, but it's coming out probably in the next month. Right now it's being mixed. So that's awesome. Yeah. And that, I mean, international, you know? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, good for you. Good for her. Thanks. So, yeah. Um, it's a great book. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, you OG Room Sixers may, you know, if you haven't already figured out, like, this is all different. I'm not in Vegas anymore. I, I moved to the Pacific Northwest, so I'm still getting things set up. So if you see me looking over here sometimes, it's because my notes are here and I'm still like designing room six. That's, that's my excuse for why I'm being so unprofessional. All right. So from there, this is a weird question. I hope you're ready for it. Okay. From the highs of ice cream sundae Pop-Tarts to the not so highs of coffee and burger, You've tried some interesting, interesting taste combinations. What's your current post-show snack? Oh. Hmm. And I, I, I know what mine is. Mine was always frozen waffles, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and some cold milk. Okay. Is this what I actually eat after a show, or is this what I No, yeah, would what, what you actually eat. eat. If, oh, what I actually eat. It's honestly probably like peanut butter on some bread because that's probably all I have in my pantry. Yeah, some sugar and carbs and, and salty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah. it just hits, yeah, yeah. hits right after a gig. I, I get it. Mm -hmm. Toast, honestly. Ooh, pe toast. peanut butter toast. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I like butter, the toasted waffles work good. Mm -hmm. Nooks and cream. And you, always, you can always have them. That's so easy. Yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, many a, many a morning at like one in the morning or whatever, I'm home. Everything's unloaded because I need the, you know, got to empty the vehicle. And I'm like, uh, I, I, just eating like this and going, it's like a reward. <laughs> <laughs> so right on. A couple more questions. And then we're going to see that uh, musical slideshow from Lydia. And um, I, I really, which, like the violin came first, right? Yeah, it did. Okay. So violin and then was it piano or guitar that came next piano i had a feeling a lot of music theory and a lot of just learning things like voice or violin the piano is there to like you know help you practice and figure out songs mm -hmm. and stuff if you can only play one instrument for the rest of your life which would you choose i think it would have it would break my heart but i think it would have to be the piano interesting Mm -hmm. I would say voice. Oh, wait. Does, okay. I, well, the reason I picked voice I was the you. piano was, <laughs> yeah, rude. <laughs> but I, I might, I'm, I think it would actually be voice, but piano no, is very I, close. I, I'm with you. Like piano, it's not the most portable thing. Even a keyboard is still right. a lumbering thing, whereas via, violin or viola or whatever. Um, I, and guitar... I don't know. Of those three, I think I'd go guitar because, well, I don't, I, I barely, rarely, rarely, rarely play piano and I, I, I don't play violin. So that's what I got is that or voice. So 
Right on. So one more question. You made it. Yay. Last question. Um, and this is a question I ask of all my prey. Uh, OG Room Sixers know what's coming. I, I, it, amazingly, I, it, it's like a different answer every time. I've done over like 160 of these things, and somehow I never get the same answer twice. So keep up the streak. No pressure. We're going to jump in a time machine and talk to little you. OK, and what we're doing, we're, we're circling back to that earliest musical influence question. OK, you can go back and you can talk to little Lydia, the, not little Lydia, who's like, I'm going to be a composer, but little Lydia, uh, you know, not so little Lydia, who's like, I want to perform. I want to write music and perform it. What is one thing that you wish you could tell Lydia or that you wish someone had told you that you're going to need to know? And it doesn't have to be a warning. It could just be like. Hey, this is a th this is a thing you're going to need to know about. I think it might even be as simple as like, hey, like you're going to get to do this. Like you don't have to worry like whether or not like you're going to have the chance to perform again or to perform or whether you're going to have a chance to find a place for these songs that you wrote. Like but like yeah, there's going to be a place for you to be able to play these and it's going to it's going to be worth it. You'll put them in leg. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right on. That's actually really, really sweet, but also that's important. Like you new musicians out there, it's worth the effort and the time because, you know, you're going to connect with somebody as long as you're, yeah. as long as you're in it for love of performing and the music and everything. And you're not just trying to turn it into a, like a financial stability situation. Don't don't get into God, music for that. Thanks. Don't get... <laughs> get into other things. Even the most famous people, it's not what you think it is. You know, just because the band got paid a million dollars to perform Wembley Stadium or whatever, doesn't mean they got to see a million dollars. There's a lot of people to pay. <laughs> but you know, one thing being working so much on the local scene is is taught me is like there's so much talent that should be bigger but they're happy with where they are because they're constantly challenging themselves and writing new stuff or maybe this is all the this is all the fame i can like you know carve out of my my life this is all the you know, the local exposure i can do but then there's also the bands who i get to interview sometimes when they come through town and they're on a national tour i never did a national tour but at the same time they're in a van you know they're crammed into a van mm -hmm. and they're you you look at them you're like you haven't showered in two days have you kind of thing and it's 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 a life it's a lifestyle it's a choice and i think it's important that new musicians especially understand you've got to like embrace all of it don't believe what you see on you know uh america's got talent or you know award shows performances anyway i digress thank you for watching and thank you for being on the channel lydia sorry for my tangent there but Oh, you're good. Stick around. We're going to see Jesus is so sweet uh, musical slideshow, and then we'll catch you in the outro. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a minute. Uh, yeah, temporarily say goodbye. When rest slips out from the night, when my eyes can't find their light, when nothing's wrong.
I want to thank Lydia Tabor for coming on the channel. It was a great interview. Awesome uh, little musical slideshow there. I hope that you'll check out all the social media links down below, and I hope that you'll check her out live if you get the chance. Uh, one of the bands that she started. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, click over there. Don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Lydia. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Ding. There's always one. <laughs>